So we're going to look at an animation of ionic bonding occur, the mechanism of ionic bonding, um, and the covalent bonding. We're going to look at that as well. Um, those are the two types of compounds we've been focusing on. Their nomenclature, how to name them. But I just wanted to uh, remind you and give you a visual of what happens during the process of the types of compounds occurring. So let's first look at ionic bonding and this animation. Sodium atoms and chloride atoms have unfilled orbitals in their outer shells. The lone electron in the outermost shell of a sodium atom can be pulled or knocked out. This ionizes the atom. It is now a positively charged sodium ion. A chlorine atom has an electron vacancy in its outer shell and can acquire another electron. This ionizes the atom to form a negatively charged chloride ion. Now, just pause this for a second. Notice the one valence electron that sodium had as an atom. Um, remember, we learned that sodium really wants to lose one, his valence electron, because by doing that, look at what remains. The second energy level is now filled. It has an octet, or eight electrons. And in the process of him transferring the electron to the chloride, or chlorine, sodium becomes positively charged. Now, initially, chlorine, because he's a halogen, had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. This electron is the one that he accepted from the sodium atom. And this made chlorine become chloride, and now he's a negatively charged ion. Now, look at his outer shell. Now, it is full with eight. So now they've obtained what we call a noble gas configuration. They're stable now. The two oppositely charged ions attract each other. An association of two ions with opposing charges is known as an ionic bond. You can observe the outcome of ionic bonding in a portion of a crystal of table salt, or sodium chloride. In such crystals, sodium ions and chloride ions interact through ionic bonds. So now let's look at our covalent bonding. Um, before I start it, notice here that what holds an ionic crystal together is this opposite charge, like a magnet holding it together in this crystal. Two hydrogen atoms, each with an unpaired electron in the outer shell, can pair up to share a pair of electrons. This stabilizes the atoms and forms a single covalent bond. Both nuclei exert the same pull on the electrons, so they are shared equally and the bond is nonpolar. There is no charge difference between different parts of the molecule. An oxygen atom has two electron vacancies in its outer shell. Two oxygen atoms can share two pairs of electrons, forming a double covalent bond. Again, the electrons are distributed equally and the bond is nonpolar. Alternatively, an oxygen atom can share electron pairs with two hydrogen atoms. Each hydrogen atom shares a single pair of electrons with the oxygen. The molecule is held together by two single covalent bonds. An oxygen nucleus has more protons than a hydrogen nucleus, and so attracts the shared electrons more strongly. This unequal sharing gives the oxygen end of the atom a slight negative charge and the hydrogen end a slight positive charge. We say that water is held together by polar covalent bonds. Notice here there is no there um, is a sharing as their energy levels overlap. Remember, hydrogen needs two electrons to look like helium, so he's now got two. In this case, this is hydrogen as well. He has two. And if you take a look at the oxygen now, and looking at this second energy level in oxygen, he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is covalent because they are cooperating and they're sharing their electrons between each other. One other thing I want you to look at real quickly um, before I finish with this little section here, and this is just a little short clip that is uh, showing you ionic and covalent bonding again.
Ionic bonding occurs between two atoms when one of the atoms has sufficient strength of attraction to remove an electron from the other atom. A sodium atom has one valence electron with a stable energy level below containing eight electrons. A chlorine atom has seven valence electrons. If the atoms collide with sufficient energy, the chlorine atom will remove the electron from the sodium. The sodium atom loses its only valence electron and becomes a positively charged sodium ion. The energy level below now provides sodium with its stable octet. The extra electron completes a stable octet for chlorine which becomes a negatively charged chloride ion. Covalent bonding occurs when neither atom has sufficient strength to completely remove the other atom's electrons. The atoms share electrons and both atoms achieve a stable outer energy level. A hydrogen atom with one valence electron needs one additional electron to complete the first energy level. An oxygen atom has six valence electrons and needs two additional electrons to complete the second energy level. As the oxygen and hydrogen atoms collide, covalent bonding is accomplished by the sharing of electrons. By sharing an electron pair with the oxygen, the hydrogen completes the noble gas configuration of helium. By sharing with the hydrogen atom, the oxygen atom now has seven electrons in its energy level still one short of the stable octet condition. A stable octet for oxygen can be completed by sharing an electron with another hydrogen atom. Okay, that is going to conclude this set of animations.